everybody, it's George Truly Dan Adams, aka the Soulful Conservative, the Prosecutor, and the DA. Coming to you live via my vehicle. <laughs> Coming to you live via my vehicle. <laughs> Here on a Monday morning. That's right. It's Monday, and let me adjust my camera just a shade. There we go. I'm gonna try and do this on a daily basis here for the morning edition of the Dan Adams Show. Um, we'll try and bring you video and audio, just in case you want to happen to take a, you know, a nice gander at this mug in the morning. But if, you know, if I get comments where it says, you know what, you know what, D, you might want just to stick to the audio, then I'll just, I'll just nix the, the morning edition video of the Dan Adams Show. But, but, ladies and gentlemen, War Radio is coming back. It's returning. Wayne Dupree, my man, my, uh, <laughs> I guess if you want to call it, uh, fellow, fellow brother conservative out there, his network, War Radio, will be returning. We are America Radio. Um, look out for an announcement soon. He is looking for, ladies and gentlemen, for more people to come on board. So if you have a show, ladies and gentlemen, that you've been wanting to put on air, that you have been saying to yourself, I am just like Dan Adams, I'm just like Wayne Dupree, I'm a grassroots conservative libertarian, that I need to get my voice out there, I want to get my voice out there, I need to get my voice out there, then War Radio, We Are America Radio is the place for you. So go up and look up Wayne Dupree, he'll have announcements coming out, as soon as he makes those announcements, I'll copy those on my social media accounts as well. But um, I'm going to be coming, I'm trying to figure out which days, and what I'm, I'm looking maybe at a Monday, Wednesday, Friday type of deal for my nightly edition of the Dan Adams Show, one hour, it all depends on if the wife allows me to, <laughs> but um, yeah, that's how it's going to go, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to start, I'm waiting for my camera to come, so once I get that and I get everything situated in the in the uh, Political Heat Studios, aka my basement, get everything working you'll get the you'll get the announcement as when the first uh re-premiere if you want to call of the dan adams show on war radio and youtube i'll be broadcasting simultaneously on war radio and youtube hopefully come maybe maybe it will start this sunday i don't know we'll have to see camera doesn't get here till later this week so we'll see well ladies and gentlemen as i divulge some of the particulars in regards to the return of war radio Let's go ahead and, and talk about the return, the continuous return of the nonsense of those on the left and the leftist liberal lamestream media. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I can't, I, I don't know how many times I have to re repeat myself in regards to my support for Donald Trump. I am supporting him as president. I am not one of your, one of these big, big old Trump supporters out there who will, you know, go to bat for him. Even if he does something wrong, there are Trump supporters who will say that he did something right. That's not me. Will never be me. Let's, that's just, for those that know me, they know that. But, ladies and gentlemen, I am supporting him as the president of the United States of America. I am supporting him because so far, he is implementing things that I agree with. So um, obviously I'm going to support him on that. And right now, ladies and gentlemen, the left, especially the liberal leftist lamestream media, is making it very hard for me not to support Donald Trump because of their attack and all out onslaught assault on Donald J. Trump. President Donald J. Trump. This whole shenanigans in regards to Oh my gosh, the incoming president never let go anyone, especially U.S. attorneys, ever before, even though Carter did it, Reagan did it, the Bushes did it, Clinton did it, Obama did it, and I just heard on the radio as to how the title of the articles, especially from those on the left, in particular, there was one that said when Obama ousted U.S. attorneys and put his in place, it said it replaced, Obama replaced. But no, with President Trump, it's President Trump ousted. Like it's some kind of coup or something. I, I am so over this BS, ladies and gentlemen. Beyond and over this BS. 
in regards to the leftist liberal lamestream media and they're just all out a- attack on President Trump. And for all the, all these individuals who are screaming and yelling, he needs to get off of Twitter. He needs to get off of Twitter. Ladies and gentlemen, have you seen how much he's curtailed his Twitter presence? So maybe someone within his camp said, you know what? Might be a smart idea to lay off Twitter and only tweet things that are just needed to be tweeted. None of the, your opinions or your attacks on other individuals and things of that nature. Maybe someone's, you know, talking into that ear of President Trump, which is a good thing, ladies and gentlemen, because he really doesn't need to be tweeting anything and everything that comes into his mind. Maybe when he was a candidate campaigning to become the president, but now he is the president of the United States of America. So President Trump needs to act presidential in regards to that. Not saying that he doesn't have the right to tweet. He has absolutely every right to tweet when he wants to, but it's when he tweets is the issue. And I think going forward, I think, like I said, someone must have been talking in his ear that, hey, Mr. President, you don't need to be pre- you don't need to be tweeting every two seconds. Worry about you know policy change, agenda, and, and and making America great again. That should be your main focus, and I think that's where it's heading right now. Because since the oh my gosh, he called out Obama in regards to being wiretapped. Really haven't seen much in regards to his tweets, so that's a good thing, ladies and gentlemen. To me, that's a good thing. Now, I was pretty much out of pocket, as they say, in regards to being up to date with the news. If you see my posts on social media, I had two horrible nights. Well, one horrible night in regards to Uber and a horrible day thinking that St. Patrick's Day parade here in Pittsburgh on Saturday would yield some, some dividends. That didn't happen either. So I'm chalking up this past weekend as just a bad Uber experience. And hopefully the upcoming weekend will change. Now, speaking of upcoming here in Pittsburgh and now spreading across northeast, especially the northeast, they're going to get hammered with some snow coming Tuesday. We may see. Now, (laughs) it's funny here in Pittsburgh. If if you live here in Pittsburgh and you watch the news and, and especially the weather and you get an idea, okay, there's a winter storm watch already was put out yesterday in regards to starting tonight at 8 p.m. and until 11 p.m. Tuesday evening that we're supposed to get hit with some snow. No one knows, ladies and gentlemen, how much snow we're going to get. It first started off 1 to 3, 2 to 4, 4 to 6, and then in the going west, or, I mean, excuse me, east, they're supposed to get hammered even more. I mean, I think, believe, I believe in Philadelphia, they might get hit with a foot and then further on eastern, on the eastern seaboard, they're supposed to be getting hit with at least a foot and more. We're here in Pittsburgh, ladies and gentlemen. For those who live here and know the weather here, you know what I'm talking about. They can say one thing now, keep saying one thing, right up until the accumulation starts, and then everything changes where we could have hardly no snow or have way more snow than they predicted. So, that's just how it rolls here in Pittsburgh. I don't know how it is in your neck of the wood, but that's just how it is. But as I digress and get back to what I was saying in regards to being out of pocket and not really being in the in the bustling and hustling of, of the political news landscape this weekend, um, I look at it like this. This upcoming week is going to be very interesting. Um, I think, as, as I stated, with the leftist, liberal, lamestream media continuous attack against President Trump, I'm, I'm, I'm interested to find out and see if, ladies and gentlemen, with this whole repeal and replace, I guess, debate, if you want to call it, how things are going to work out. Because right now, excuse me, right now, President Trump is on board with the House is not, well, let me take that back. He's on board with Paul Ryan and those who support this bill. And I know he's the art of the man of the art of the deal. He he, he, he coined the phrase, I guess. Not, not really. He coined that phrase. I'm not really certain. I don't know if he coined it or that's one of his books. I know that. The art of the deal. But there is no dealing 
message, ladies and gentlemen, in regards to number one, repealing Obamacare. Okay. Now, you got people like Michael Medved saying that this this bill is is good because and he's always worrying about always worrying about wins and losses and how the Republican Party and the GOP cannot look bad in the eyes of those of the American public, especially going into 2018 and 2020. That is his number one goal. He don't care about, you know, standing behind principles. It's either how are we going to win, win, and if we lose, how to mitigate the effects of the loss. It's not about standing for principle. I mean, he brought up the whole Ted Cruz shutting down the government, which Ted Cruz had to shut down the government. Which is, is, please stop, stop saying that. That's not what happened. Um, but I look at it like this. I don't know if you may be on board or not. But for individuals to state that we can repeal a pump, yeah, let's say that again. And it's so hard to say that. Repeal, repeal repeal Obamacare and not have something in place to make sure that the people that ultimately received health insurance and I'm going to say that loosely received health insurance under Obamacare that they don't lose that health insurance and to me honestly ladies and gentlemen to be honest if these people somehow some way received health insurance under Obamacare then we need to make sure that a vehicle is in place that they don't lose their coverage. That's just me. But I have to add a, add a caveat to that, okay? Things need to be reverted back to how it was before Obamacare was even thought of and before it was unfortunately rammed down our throats and passed as law. Just revert back to how things were. They weren't the greatest. We all know that, but it's not this mess that it is right now. And people keep saying, people keep espousing that we should allow Obamacare to just collapse under its own feet. I don't know where you stand on that. I don't even know where I stand on it, ladies and gentlemen. To be honest, I don't. I don't know if the right thing to do is to continually allow Obamacare to fail, but yet... It's tough, ladies and gentlemen. It really is. Because I'm looking at individuals who are suffering. Who are just needlessly suffering under Obamacare. You got individuals who can't even afford Obamacare. Excuse me. Afford a health insurance now. Lost their doctor. Lost their plan. Lost the coverage that they had because of Obamacare. Now they're suffering to the point where they can't pay their deductibles. They can't... <laughs> The the, 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 you look at some of these deductibles, ladies and gentlemen, and it's unbelievable. They can't pay the premiums, they can't pay the deductibles. So they're basically had to drop health insurance in order to maintain having a house and everything else that flows along with that. How can that even be possible when the, the damn bill is named the Affordable Care Act? That idiot, Barack Hussein Obama, for weeks lied to the American people. You can keep your doctor, keep your plan, a lie. Every American family is going to save on average $2,500, a lie. Knowing, knowing full well that for in order for this Affordable Care Act, a.k.a. Obamacare, was to work, ladies and gentlemen. That he needed to have a lot of young people, a lot of young people come on board and buy health insurance. And then with this whole penalty under the individual mandate, where if you don't, which is the, i tell you what, if that isn't government control, ladies and gentlemen, if that isn't a government overreach, if that isn't just sheer tyranny from the left, ladies and gentlemen, where if you don't, where you don't, where you don't buy something, you get penalized for it. Wow, ladies and gentlemen, that that is a double joy, Myron Coke 
moment right there. So if you don't buy health insurance under the individual mandate, then you are punished by paying a fee. <laughs> that is just, I, wow. You have to, you have to, let me repeat that, ladies and gentlemen. Just in case you didn't hear that, I know you know about it. It's been rammed down our throats. But let me repeat it again. If, as an individual, you don't buy health insurance, you don't state on your IRS claims that you didn't buy health insurance, that you're going to get hit with a penalty, a fee. You're going to get hit across the head with a bill, if you want to call it, because you didn't buy health insurance under the Affordable Care Act. Affordable, yeah, affordable to the point where if you don't buy it, you're gonna get nailed with a fee. Only the leftist liberal numbnut moon bats in this country would come up with a bill, ladies and gentlemen, that it would even broach that topic, that subject of if you don't buy something, then you're gonna get nailed for it with a fee, with a penalty. Are you friggin' kidding me, ladies and gentlemen? That is the left in this country. You don't go our route, then we're gonna punish you. Whether it's monetarily, whether it's being thrown out to the wolves in regards to the press, whether it's protests, whether it's anarchy, whether it's sheer disregard for a person's privacy, whether it's, you know what, you're, you're just a normal average American citizen out here trying to do their best to maintain whatever semblance of life that you may have. But we're going to come after you with guns blazing. We're going to make sure that you pay for the fact that you didn't bow down to the leftist liberal moonbat society that we have garnered, that we have said, you know what, this is the way of life that we see it. And if you don't come on board, if you don't support it, if you happen to even spouse the fact that you are a conservative or a Republican or a libertarian for that matter. If you're not a liberal, forget it. They're going to attack you. They're going to come after you with guns friggin' blazing, Johnny Blaze and everything else in regards to, and that was me giving props to someone for letting me go. You know how it is when you drive. I hate to go off on a tangent real quick here. But you know how when you drive, ladies and gentlemen, and someone lets you go, the proper etiquette is to give them a, hey, thank you so much. But it's 90 plus percent of the time. People don't even acknowledge that you exist when you give them a pass. Ain't that effed up? Ain't that janked up? But now, getting back to <laughs> This whole craziness on the left that if you don't agree or support or go to bat for them in some possible fat in some some form or fashion, some outlet that they feel that goodness gracious, this is something that the America wants, even though polls come out and say that America does it. If you don't, ladies and gentlemen, fall in line with the leftist liberal moonbat society. Me, being an average Joe, living paycheck to paycheck, sometimes having to use credit cards to pay bills, sometimes having to borrow money from family, sometimes being deluged with phone calls from creditors because we owe them. If somehow I don't agree with them or somehow I make a statement like me, Believing that marriage is between a man and a woman, and I somehow, some way, don't facilitate a homosexual wedding in regards to baking a cake if I was a cake baker. Then, ladies and gentlemen, I am going to be sued. I am going to be uh, hit 
in some way or some fashion with a lawsuit that's going to put me and take me out of business on the brink of utter collapse in regards to my personal life, professional life. This is what they do on the left if you don't agree and fall in line with their liberal leftist moonbat agenda. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if you're, if you're me and you know how I roll, and I don't, I don't, so, I don't know what the, what the end result would be, but I will fight and fight and fight for my beliefs. And I hope that you would do the same. And as I end this morning edition, simulcast, and you'll see from the post that I put out, this will be available on YouTube and on Spreaker. May God continue to bless you and yours. May he keep you and your family safe. Until next time, God bless. Peace. And you know this, man. Can I get some help here? Yes, you. I'm talking to all of you. I need your help because I, just like many of you, am one of the millions of Americans who is all too familiar with cancer. I lost both my grandfathers and my uncle to cancer. My grandmother battled cancer three times in her lifetime. And my amazing mom, well, she's a two-time cancer survivor. But there is certainly reason for hope. Due to earlier diagnosis and evolving research, the five-year survival rates have increased for people living with cancer. One exciting area of cancer research today is the field of immuno-oncology, science that aims to work with the body's own immune system to help fight cancer. That's why I'm proud to be joining Bristol-Myers Squibb and the cancer community to launch Ready, Raise, Rise a program that educates about immuno-oncology research and encourages people to raise a flag for those we love affected by this horrible disease. On this website, you can create a personalized flag on behalf of yourself or a loved one touched by cancer and share it with your friends. You can also select a cancer organization you would like to receive a potential donation. The three groups with the most flags raised on their behalf will receive a charitable donation from Bristol Myers Squibb. By sharing your flag, you're making a difference by supporting loved ones, raising money for cancer groups, and educating about groundbreaking research. So please, join me. Let's raise our flags against cancer. News Radio. I'm Dave Anthony. Where's the evidence? That's what congressional committees are asking the White House more than a week after President Trump claimed he was wiretapped by President Obama during the campaign. Fox's Rachel Sutherland live in Washington. Dave, Democratic Congressman Adam Schiff told ABC's This Week he wants the White House to show proof of President Trump's wiretapping claims. Either the president uh, quite deliberately for some reason made up this charge, uh, or perhaps more disturbing, the president really believes this. Counselor to the president, Kellyanne Conway, says the president is pleased Congress is investigating. We know this happens. Um, as goes Trump Tower, though, uh, we'll see where these investigations lead. Conway says the White House will reserve further comment until after lawmakers complete their investigation. Dave. Rachel, President Trump will meet this morning with what the White House calls victims of Obamacare as House Republicans keep pushing their bill to replace the health care law. Some conservatives, though, don't think it goes far enough changing things. Democrats who oppose it might get ammunition from a Congressional Budget Office report that may come out today and show Americans could lose coverage. In the past, the CBO score has really been meaningless. They've said that many more people be insured than are actually insured. Gary Cohn is director of the White House Economic Council. Tomorrow, President Trump will meet with German Chancellor Angela Merkel later this week. He'll have a meeting with Saudi Arabia's second in line to the throne. It's not spring yet, as the Northeast will find out tomorrow big time. Lived in the Northeast my whole life, so it's not 
out of the ordinary. She's in Massachusetts. Areas from Virginia to Maine will get buried. Some places could get two feet of snow and blizzard conditions. This by far is going to be the biggest snowfall we've seen so far this season. Two merging systems are coming together. There's a low pressure system in the southeast. There's also a line of snow moving across the Midwest. They're going to come together. Fox meteorologist Adam Klotz, that snow making travel tough in Chicago. More than 500 flights are grounded there today. Fox News Radio, fair and balanced. Months after British citizens stunned Europe with that Brexit vote to leave the EU, there's a renewed push for a Skaxit. Scottish voters wanting independence from Britain. Fox's Simon Owens live in London. The day voters in Scotland rejected independence in 2014, but now the head of the Scottish government just revealing plans for another referendum. I am ensuring that Scotland's future will be decided by the people. Of Scotland. Scottish First Minister Nicola Sturgeon saying she's responding to the Brexit vote because in that referendum, the majority of voters in Scotland wanted to remain in the EU. The UK government has not moved even an inch in pursuit of compromise and agreement. Ms. Sturgeon saying a referendum could be held next year, although the British government would have to give consent. Dave? Simon has now 50 people dead in a mountain of trash in Ethiopia, which collapsed at a dump on Saturday. Dozens are still missing. In Nigeria, 35 people were killed when a truck hauling cattle and merchants ran out of control on a highway. On Wall Street, stock futures are up slightly before this week's trading. 84 years after King Kong first appeared on screen, a new Kong is king of the box office. The spring break crowd helping to crown a new box office champ. That's Kong. He's God on the island. Kong Skull Island coming in first its debut weekend with 61 million, better than expected. The film reportedly costing 185 million to make. Falling to second. Logan, I don't want to talk about it. Logan, just stop. Logan featuring Hugh Jackman as the X-Men character Wolverine making another 37.9 million. Get Out in third with another 21.1 million. The faith-based film The Shack taking in 10.1 million. And that's Fox's Jane Metzler. The NCAA tournament is set. The basketball game is start tomorrow. Defending champion Villanova is the top seed among the 68 teams. I'm Dave Anthony, Fox News Radio. To start tomorrow, defending champion Villanova is the top seed among the 68 teams. I'm Dave Anthony, Fox News Radio. Thank you for coming out. Good night. Yes. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hip hop song. the first rhyme interlude as I bring you the food that keeps you in the room full. This hip-hop soul lose control. The betterment of all mankind totally dependent on this rhyme. Searching for the next big thing. Melodic and rhyme and yes he can Let sing. Let me take your hand and I'll Recognition, purposely built up my soul's transmission. Rough, rugged, and raw. Let's explore. The name is show enough, and that's for sure. Replicate, demonstrate, overcompensate, deviate. Let me penetrate 
infiltrate So I complicate, but I'm keeping it real Let yes. me take your hand and I'll lead the way Bringing hip-hop soul to the break of day Just leave those worries far behind And feel the heat of the sun So